Well, good morning. Welcome. Do you think you've made a really good choice so far to be here today? I think so too. We talked about it. God is with us, I can tell. And He is here. You had a lot of different choices to make today, and you're here, and God is present with us. My name is Pastor Jim Busher, Pastor of Adult Ministries here, and I love being here this weekend. There is no other weekend, I think, during the whole course of the year that you will make more important decisions regarding your schedule, right? You go back to school, uh, schedules begin to change, but I need to talk to a special group of us who are facing maybe, uh, I don't know about the most important, but very significant decisions. Any of you going to the state fair yet this afternoon or tomorrow? You will have decisions to make how you're going to consume the 6,400 calories. Okay? There was a guy two years ago, he had high cholesterol, and so he came up with this experiment. Two days before he went to the fair, he fasted. The day before, he went to his doctor and had his cholesterol checked. He went to the fair, ate what we normally do there, kept track of it, got home, added up all the calories, 6,400. It's like enough for a whole week. Okay. And he went back the next day, had his cholesterol checked, and it went down. <laughs> Here's the exact quote from the doctor. This is not what I was expecting. <laughs> well, if you're going there, a few food facts. A half a million corn dogs are consumed every year. A third of a million dozen donuts. That's over 4 million individual ones. Two and a half million individual cheese curds with 475 calories in each order. You have a plate of those, and that'll get you good for a while. And in a somewhat related matter, 22,000 rolls of toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> September is a time of choices. And uh, when I was growing up, my mother tells me I was a pretty good kid, except in the month of September. I, I tended to get a bit grumpy back then. And we grew up on a farm. My dad had a poultry processing plant, but from time to time we'd have pigs and horses and uh, occasionally cows and so on. And summers were great. We had a group of about 10 of us boys in the neighborhood, no girls. Uh, <clears throat> but we'd get together, and when my dad had pigs, it was great. We'd come up with all kinds of different games. And one of our favorite was we would get twine and tie it around a corn cob and let it down off from the second floor of the barn the pigs, and they'd clamp onto it, and we'd see how far we could pull them up. <laughs> when we got bored with that, we'd grab their curly little tails and try to ride them until one summer one died a heat stroke, and my dad said, no more of that. <laughs> and best of all, one year, maybe not for my dad, but for the rest of us, he had a business setback, and we ended up with 40,000 cake boxes that he couldn't use anymore. And so my gang and I, we got together and we built scaffolding out of uh, wooden chicken crates on the two sides in the barn and made the front of them all these cake boxes. You know, for weeks actually, we'd make all the boxes and build our forts. And at the end of the summer, we had a huge battle with corn cobs trying to knock each other's forts apart. <laughs> Kids, video games may be cool, but hey, I'll tell you, you know, growing up on a farm was great. So... <laughs> You can see why going back to school was kind of a tough transition, sitting in class for so long. How many of you have been back to school already? Kids or adults or anybody back in? Okay. How many of you are going this week? Okay. Our prayers are with you. <laughs> you adjust back to, to the routine of that. And there's choices that you have to make. I can still remember, I can feel it even right now in the pit of my stomach, those tough choices that I had to make in grade school, and one of the most important ones was, what lunchbox am I going to choose? Now, I'm dating myself here. Back then, they didn't have food in schools. We had to bring our own from home, and uh, you always had to decide at the beginning of the year what the lunchbox was, and you were stuck with the thing for the whole year, okay? And you didn't know what was going to be cool. So there were years we'd be faced with decisions like this. You know, I got to get a Star Trek one or a Hulk or a G.I. Joe. And if you choose the wrong one, you were, out of the, you were out of it for the whole year. You had to bring that thing in. It was kind of embarrassing, right? Okay. 
<laughs> September is a time when we make all kinds of different choices. And on a more serious note, the fall of 2011, you will only have one of those. For your schedule, how you choose to re-engage with the typical life during the year, you're making decisions for yourself, if you're a kid, how you engage for parents. What choices will you make this year? And particularly, would like to challenge you today to think about this. If you are going to thrive spiritually in 2011, what will that look like? And what will it take to get from where you are now to where you want to be? The ushers will bring in the Bibles. We're going to turn in just a minute to look at a great passage in Colossians chapter 1. If you're a guest of ours today and don't have a Bible, we'd love for you to take this one home with you. But we are completing a series today on seasons of growth, and we've chosen this very intentionally. It's going to be an exciting fall here at Hosanna. We've been preparing for almost a year now, uh, thinking of you, how do we help you in very easy, clear ways take your next best step spiritually? And as we began thinking about that, we began to realize that different people are in different places and different seasons of life. And different things work for different people in different seasons of life. So how can we find just exactly the right thing for you to take you the next step that the Lord wants you to go in order for you to thrive? We asked our pastors, and we asked Daily Bread Books, and we asked some key staff people, and uh, asked all, what has worked for you depending on what season of life you're in? And we have compiled hundreds of resources now that a week from tomorrow, Monday night, September 12, and our grow link starting at 6 o'clock, uh, we're going to help you find that next best step for you spiritually. Quite a task. Because, I mean, look around at you. There's a lot of different kinds of people here. <laughs> okay? And that has been our goal, to prepare us for thinking about the next best step spiritually. Uh, two weeks ago, Pastor Ryan talked about what does it look like when we're just beginning with God? And he had a present up here, and it's like God gives us the present of Jesus Christ. And he, he invites us to take that, and what does it look like? And it's an exciting kind of a time. Pastor Bill last week talked about sanctification, about what it's like to grow in God, uh, be, the process of becoming holy. And he challenged us at Hosanna, never ever coast. Though God has done a lot of really good things here, we don't want to rest on what has happened. We don't want to coast, but we want to thrive. And so today I get to talk with you about what does it really mean to thrive as we go forward. Colossians chapter 1, it's on page 711 in the Bibles that were passed out. It's really a great passage, and I'd like to go through and make a few comments just verse by verse before we turn to choices that we have to make. And Paul writes there, beginning in verse 9, So we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. Now, Paul is writing here to a church that he had never been to before. He had served for three years in Ephesus, the book of Ephesians. He, he wrote it from there or, or to them. But the church of Colossae was about 100 miles to the, west, or, yeah, to the uh, east of where Paul had served. And a man named Epaphras, you can read of him in verse 7 of Colossians chapter 1, uh, came to Ephesus while Paul was there, heard the message of the gospel, received Jesus Christ, became a Christian. Paul discipled him and sent him back to the church at Colossae. So though Paul had never been there, it's like the, the church there at Colossae were Paul's spiritual grandchildren. And can you feel the warmth that comes through here? Paul cared desperately about that they thrive in getting to know God more and more. Did you know that before you walked in here today, we had people on our prayer ministry team walk through every row, and they prayed over every single seat here today. I hope that the same passion that Paul had for Colossae, you feel that here today. 
we strive to gather, not just to let life pass by, but we want to thrive when we ask the question, if the fall of 2011 looked the best, if I was thriving spiritually, what would it look like? We want to have that happen, and don't stop praying for that. Paul goes on, we ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and give you wisdom and understanding. And I love that prayer. It's not like Paul just says a little bit of wisdom, but I pray that you have complete uh, knowledge now. Anybody here, would you like to know what God's will, the complete will of God is for you coming up this fall? No kidding. Okay. Paul's heart is going out to them and saying, this is what we want here. And you can sense the church getting on board together. And to give you the spiritual wisdom and understanding, then, you, then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord, and your lives will produce every kind of fruit. Notice the verbs, always, or the adjectives, always and every kind of good fruit will honor the Lord. Your lives will produce the best. What Paul's talking about here is as well illustrated as anywhere in Scripture, what it looks like if we're going to thrive together. All the while, you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. Now, we need to take Scripture and just sort of breathe it in and reinterpret what does that mean for you? As I read through that, here's what it's saying. I will thrive as I become a totally transformed Trinitarian. Can you feel the energy rising in the room on that one? (laughs) Say what? I hope by the time we're done, you'll get on board with this. Here's what it is. Totally, the words that words that Paul used here, complete knowledge, all and every. It, it's being sold out to all that God wants to do. There's a transformation process as we learn more and more. That, that's transforming in a process that goes on. And and the Trinitarian part, he said in that, that last verse, is this: You will grow as you learn to know God better and better. Paul often, when he began a greeting to a church and when he gave them a parting blessing, would say to them, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Jesus, in his great commission, as he was ascending to heaven, gave a blessing and a command and a commission to the church, and he said, go and baptize, disciple and baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So I'd like to take you on a journey with me for a few minutes this morning, looking at what it means if we thrive fully in growing in this relationship with God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I think by the time we're done, you're going to get on board with this totally transformed Trinitarian stuff. Okay, let's try it. I want to thrive in knowing God the Father. How can that really happen? A couple things for me as I think about that, and again, this is my story as it comes through my filters, and I invite you, what what does it mean to you as you think about really thriving and getting to know the Father better? Some of the past times that I've been with you here, uh, the last time I think I rode my bicycle in, gives me a chance to confess, okay? I didn't have a helmet on. For those of you who admonished me back then, Let me assure you, the only time I ever do not wear a helmet is when I ride my bike in church. (laughs) I always do it other than that. I've talked about in basketball, I still play basketball three or four days a week, and I've demonstrated my fabulous fadeaway uh, turnaround non-jumper. Okay, I jump, but if you don't leave the ground, you can't really call it a jump shot, right? Okay talked about the amazing things of going snorkeling and seeing the variety that God has created in the world. What in the world does that stuff have to do with being spiritual? God created the world. Our Heavenly Father is the creator of all things. Sometimes I think when we think thriving spiritually, we have such a narrow concept of that 
But God wants us to embrace and to enjoy the whole world that he's given. I don't know what that looks like for you, but for me, if I'm going to thrive spiritually, I don't want to miss anything. To riding the bike and feeling the G-forces as we go around, he created us with the ability to do that. Okay? To, to smell the fresh air, to enjoy the change of the seasons. We share that with God the Father. There's one other thing in particular about God the Father that I, I just love. If you were in the Old Testament time before Jesus came into the world, God's people back then never dared to say the name of God. They were afraid that they would take his name in vain and that they'd die. When Jesus came and the disciples asked him, how should we pray, he said, our Father. And it had to be just shocking to them. He used the word Abba. We get the word Daddy or Dada from that. That's the intimacy of the name that God gave to us in Jesus. I want to grab on to a father who has that kind of intimacy. And that's of special significance for me now because I, uh, 10 months ago or so, I became a grandfather. <clears throat> it is really cool. Now, if you were here last week, you saw Pastor Bill show a video of his granddaughter. Okay, and she was giggling. Yeah, that was kind of cute. <clears throat> you don't have to tell him where we're going to go next, okay? He's not with us today. But if you want to see a cute granddaughter, look at this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, take a vote. Who's the cutest, right? <laughs> Uh, that's my granddaughter there. I've got to tell you a story here. Well, it's kind of related to embracing all the fullness of God. But I came home from a bike ride two days ago, and my wife was watching uh, Maya, is her name. And uh, Maya is just beginning to crawl, and she's getting really good at it. So my wife and the cat would move uh, about two or three feet over in the living room, going around the, the uh, coffee table there, and Maya would crawl to get to the cat, and then they'd move a little bit further. They had made two laps around when I came home from the bike ride. And my wife said, look how fast Maya can crawl now. She's chasing the cat. So they did this, and my daughter, granddaughter's over on this side, and she looked at the cat, and she looked at Grandpa. <laughs> and my wife says, Maya, come here to the cat. And I said, Maya. And she looked over here. <laughs> Guess where she came. <laughs> She liked me better than the cat. <laughs> okay. It's those kinds of moments okay, that God the Father comes to us and he says, embrace. I want your fall to be fully alive. I want you to thrive. Don't let those kinds of things pass by. Now, I don't know what that looks like for you. Uh, for me, I enjoy God the Creator when I'm on my bicycle and just riding and, and praising. I enjoy those moments with my granddaughter. But I'd like you just to, to pause and just to breathe for a moment, because this part of the message you have to write. If you really thrive with God the Father, if you embrace all of life as he has created it, what will your fall look like? And for some of you, it, it may have to do with your family. Kathy gave us a great challenge. If you want to adopt some kids here in our youth ministries, more than 2,000 kids come through here in a week. What an opportunity to thrive with God and make an impact. I don't know what that looks like for you, but as you continue throughout the service, continue asking, Father, if I thrive with you, what is that really going to look like? I want to thrive with God the Father. I want to thrive with God the Son, too. And John wrote in the first chapter that when Jesus came, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We can learn a lot of things about God the Father and creation. But we can't come to know specifically who Jesus Christ is unless we read the Bible. That's how he's revealed himself to us. I want to get to know the Bible better and to find out more about who this Jesus is. 
You know, I, I know the big three because we have special holidays for them about the significance of Jesus' work. I think about Christmas when he gave this gift into the world. God could have turned his back on us when sin came in and said, I don't want anything to do with that. Uh, literally, he could have said, go to hell. But instead, God sent Jesus into the world, and he came right among us. I want to be that kind of a person who gets out of my comfort zone and reaches people where they're at. That's what he did for me. I want to be the kind of person who grabs onto the significance of Good Friday and to know that my sins are paid for. I don't have to worry about making mistakes. Wow. My sins, past, present, and future have been paid for. Do you understand the joy and freedom that we have? Our theology, what we believe about that, makes a tremendous difference in how we live every single day of our lives. The fact that Easter happened, the third of those big three, and that he rose from the dead assures me of the promise that he who began a good work in me will bring it to completion. I trust that he's going to be true to that promise that he gives. There's such a tie between what we choose to believe here as we gather together and how we live every single day of the week. For me, as I think about the Son, I want to get to know him better, not just for those big three. But I want to recommit to the Roman study because there's no book, and we're going to be getting that next Sunday, there is no book, I think, that describes more the significant impact of the life of Jesus Christ in an orderly way than the book of Romans. I want to do more than that, though. I want to go back into the Gospels and find out more about this person of Jesus Christ. He has an amazing ability in whatever situation he's in, no matter how conflicted that situation is, to say the right thing to point people to God. He was a wise teacher. I want more of that. Again, you have to write this part of the message for you, but if you think want to thrive in your relationship with Jesus Christ, what will it take to learn more about who he is? Through a Roman study, and we'd encourage you, if you're in a small group, uh, especially if you're the leader, go on our group finder, change your material used to Romans, so that those who are looking for a small group to get into to study Romans can find you. Uh, go online you can, if you're looking for a group and look for material used for Romans. It's going to be a fantastic study. That may not be enough. You may want to do more. There may be something else. But if you want to thrive in a relationship with Jesus Christ, what would that look like? And I want to get to know and thrive in a relationship with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the present power of God among us. And all the things that we've talked about, all the work that Jesus Christ did, the freedom that he gives, the forgiveness of sins, being present in the middle of, of whatever situation we're in, the Holy Spirit is here right now to make that happen. Sometimes it's like, bam, immediate. And I don't know if you've ever had that. I've, I've had times where I'd be in my office and I just get a nudging from the Spirit. You should call this person. And you call them and they say, how did you know to call now? Okay. Depending on my relationship with them, I'll say, God told me. It's, it's not like caller ID. You know, somebody's calling in, you can say, hey, George, how'd you know? Well, I'm operating in my prophetic. No, actually, it was caller ID. Okay. But the Holy Spirit does these kinds of things. Sometimes it's that quick and immediate in fact, the word for the power of the gospel that, that Paul uses in Romans chapter 1, dunamis, we get our word dynamite from. The Holy Spirit can do those kinds of things just now and have it done. But there's another kind of power very consistent with that. Imagine how many tons of TNT it would have taken to cut through the Grand Canyon. And sometimes it's just the slow, persistent moving of the Holy Spirit to do things beyond what you can think or imagine, like the water cutting the gorge over years, persistently 
cutting and cutting and cutting. And the Holy Spirit does that. Whether it's fast or slow, I want to be in the flow of what he's doing. If you were here last week, uh, Pastor Bill went through it very quickly, and he does not like to call attention to himself, I know, but there was a profound moving of the Holy Spirit, both in a moment, but also as a result of choices that led to long-term change. Last Saturday morning, Carolyn Krantz uh, passed away. Carolyn was one of our first worship leaders here at Hosanna. Uh, Dave has been very involved, her husband, very involved in our men's ministry here for a long time, uh, dear to the heart of many of us here. And if you caught what Pastor Bill said, Carolyn died 1.30 about on Saturday morning. Dave called the small group that had met together. Pastor Bill and his wife were in that. Dave and Carolyn were in it, a number of other couples. And by 3 o'clock, their Bible study met one last time with Carolyn until her body was taken at 4 in the morning. And the Holy Spirit, I'm sure, did a number there that we'd want to be a part of. Our longing for each of us here is that we know those moments of intimacy with God the Father, with God the Son, with God the Holy Spirit. And those happen through choices that we make. A number of years ago, a group of couples got together and said, we are going to commit to do life together. And it resulted in one of the most intimate moments that human beings can ever have as we share together, passing from this life to the next. And it's not a very big step. If your fall of 2011 is to look the best, what will it look like? And what steps will you take? I don't want this to sound too hard. It's very, very easy. Because receiving God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is a package deal. When you say to Jesus Christ, I know I need help, I can't do life on my own, I believe that you lived and died, that you're coming back again, that you rose, will you be my Savior and Lord? God the Father becomes our Father, and the Holy Spirit takes up residence here. And it's not so much an effort of trying harder or making tough choices for the impossible. I think it's actually much more just letting go what God has already planted here. Got a video that illustrates that. Take a look.
The good news is that God is even more eager than you are to thrive. There's a world waiting to hear the song that he's placed inside. It's going to be a great fall. What will you do to thrive? The good news right in this moment, we have the opportunity to choose to experience the fullness of God in Holy Communion. God is present here with us. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And it's such a sacred time to right now let him speak. Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took the bread and broke it. He said, this is my body broken for you. After supper, he took the cup and said, This is my blood shed for you. Take, eat, drink, remember, and believe that the body of our Lord Jesus Christ was shed for a complete forgiveness of all your sins. Let's prepare to come to his table with this prayer of confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. So we receive the bread. We invite you to take it and to hold it. We'll be celebrating together. The body of Christ broken for you. you receive the wine, the uh, wine is red and the grape juice is white. Whew. <laughs> the blood of our Lord shed for you. Father, thanks so much for the privilege that you've given to us to call you Abba, Father. Lord, for teaching us all that you do in your word about who you are, the benefits that you've earned for us by your life, death, resurrection, ascension, and your coming again. For the present power of the Holy Spirit, for your presence here and now to help us thrive this fall. Wherever our journeys take us, Father, we want to do it with you, God our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for allowing us to call you this. And we pray this, Lord, in the prayer that you taught us, joining together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Kids who are with us here today, we'd love to bless you. You're going back to school this week or you've been there already. We want you to know, too, that God's will is for you to thrive in him. So if you're near a child, if you could just extend your hand. And we pray this blessing. Father, thanks so much for the gift of these children that you've given. Lord, we know they had a special place in your heart. You often called them to yourself, and they sat on your lap, and you would bless them. And we do that here. You know what this fall has for them and the choices that they have to make. So anoint them with your presence. Be with them in Jesus' name. Amen. We have prayer ministers available this morning. Uh, they're coming up now, in fact. If there's something that the Lord has laid on your heart and say, you know, this is what I think God is calling me to. I'd like to have it confirmed or anointed. We sure would enjoy to have you come forward. Let's stand, shall we, and receive this parting blessing. It's right from Colossians chapter 1. You will grow as you learn to know God better and better. Get ready for a great fall. Have a great week. Okay.